This is a hypothesis test problem. Let's take a look at this. A study was conducted to determine the proportion of people who dream in black and white instead of color. Among 306 people over the age of 55, 68 dream in black and white. And among 298 people under the age of 25, 13 dream in black and white. We want to use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that the proportion of people over 55 who dream in black and white is greater than the proportion of those under 25. All right, so we know that this is a hypothesis test. And in knowing so, we want to be able to identify the claim. So I'm just going to underline the claim, test the claim that the proportion of people over 55 who dream in black and white is greater than the proportion of those under 25. So I see that this is a proportion problem because that's a piece of information that they give you. A couple more things to notice. We have two samples that we're taking. We've got 306 people dreaming black, uh, 68 of them dreaming black and white, and out of um, 298 people, 13 dream in black and white. So we have two samples and we're testing and comparing proportions, saying one of them, one of the samples, um, or one of the population has a greater proportion than the other. Okay, so let's get this set up. First thing we want to do is we want to identify the two populations. So let's say population one will be the 55 and over, and Population 2 would be those people um, that are 25 and under. So out of these populations, we want to see if we can get the statistics. Um, for those 55 and over, they counted 36 of them, so that's the total and we usually call that n and population one will put a sub one subscript and there are 306 total for population two the n the total is 298 now how many people dream in black and white so we'll count our let's call it count and this is denoted by X. That's the number of successes and where the success is going to be the black and white. Um, the population 55 and over, 68 of them dream in black and white. The population 25 and under, 13 dream in black and white. Okay, so this is our setup. Uh, each of these would have their proportion their sample and we usually call this um, P hat that's for our sample proportion so for the first sample it's going to be 68 over 36 or 306 excuse me and our proportion for our second sample is 13 over 298 all right so those are some important statistics that we can consider and now let's get this set up. So this is our claim. Um, I'm gonna not write the claim right now, but let's remember the statement and let's have it really covered and underlined. But we do need to write this claim in mathematical form. So what we're saying is the population proportion for the uh, age group of 55 and over, that's P1, <coughs> has a greater proportion of people that dream in black and white than that of the second proportion from population 2. So notice this is a population proportion. It's different from the sample proportion. The sample proportion is denoted with a hat and the population proportion is just P without the hat. 
now that we have our claim, the opposite of the claim is P1 less than or equal to P2. That's the complete opposite. And so out of these two statements, we figure out which one would be our null hypothesis and which one would be all our alternative hypothesis. And so we want to put the whole symbol here. Now, the claim does not contain a condition of equality. There's no equal sign here. The opposite does. There is an equal sign there. So I will take my claim and put that in the alternative hypothesis because it does not contain a condition of equality. And then my null hypothesis, well, since it wasn't the claim, I can either write exactly what I see or what I have written or in this case we can just say equal because we want our null hypothesis to be a condition of equality okay so this is the first really important piece of information that we're looking at okay now comes some calculator work we have all the statistics that's needed. Now we can use the formulas if you want to do things by hand, but um, this video is focused on dealing with your calculator. So let's see how to do this using our calculator. So our calculator, with this we have two samples and we're testing the proportion. Let's go to stat and roll over to test. And if you look, take a look at where the proportions are, there's two prop Z tests. So I can arrow down to number six or I can just hit number six. And this is the pr two proportion Z test. Now here they've already got this divided into X1 and N1 and we have our statistics already. So let's get 68 for our X1 and our total is 306. For our second population, we have 13 out of 298. And then this last bit of information is asking us what is our alternative hypothesis. So let's take a look at our alternative hypothesis. We see P1 is bigger than P2. So this is P1 and we're comparing it to P2. We're not using the not equal sign. We're not using the less than sign we are using the greater than sign. So let's go over there and select that and then arrow down to calculate. So this is our, let's take a quick picture of this. And let's paste it over here off to the side. Uh, this is the calculator command that we want and let's go back to our calculator and hit calculate and then if you look at the arrow down we'll see that there's more information just but just taking a peek at that piece of information that's information that we already know so let's go back to the top of the screen and the first two are important the other two uh, would be the calculations that we didn't do over here we left these as fractions but if you calculated these you would have get 0.22 you would have gotten 0.22 and 0.04 uh, the other one is a pooled population which would have been needed if you are doing this by hand uh, where we collect the uh, X's for both populations and collect the N's for both populations and then divide but we're not looking at that we're just uh, our calculator did that already and we're not really using the formula so another s shot of this, and let's squeeze the other screenshot. Whoops. Let's squeeze the other screenshot over here. All right. So what did we do? We called on, uh, let's add it on over here, one prop Z test. And then we got a couple of pieces of information that will be important for us. 
this test statistic has a variable z attached to it which means we use a normal distribution and we got 6.4397 let's just call it 98 um, and our p-value let's call this pv I'm calling it pv because there's a lot of p's there's p, p-hat and p-bar and stuff like that so I'll just call it PV for p-value and it says 6.01 but if you take a, a further look at this we need to scoot that over a little bit let's see just so we can see the screen um, we get a E negative 11 and what that means is that we take that decimal point and move it 11 places to the left well instead of drawing all those zeros you might have seen um, this expression 0, 0.000 or sometimes you might see this expression um, either case it's not exactly zero but it's really 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 close to zero so we get a very small number and so that is our result for our p-value okay now that we have our p-value excuse me now that we have our p-value we want to make our decision so our decision is going to be based on our p-value. So we'll say since our p-value is really, really small, and that's clearly less than alpha, um, we can say 0 plus compared to 0 0.01. Uh, 0 plus is less than. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so this is not the end of our hypothesis test. This is uh, the decision that we made. At the very end of this process, we want to be able to rewrite our claim in non-technical terms. And so let's, uh, let's take a look at the logic here, and then we'll take a look at a, a table that's in your textbook. Um, the claim is the alternative hypothesis whenever you do a hypothesis test you are always testing the null hypothesis so we rejected the null hypothesis which means we have strong evidence to support the claim so our conclusion we will write that we support the claim okay and then we're going to rewrite this whole claim <coughs> now I wanted to show you a table uh, this is the wording for your final conclusion. Uh, the original con claim does not contain a condition of equality and you rejected the claim and so this is the statement that we have. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that and then we'll include the claim. Alright, let's go back to our problem and finish it off. So we rejected the null hypothesis and let's take one more look at this there is sufficient evidence to support the claim and that's exactly what I'm going to write there is sufficient evidence to support the claim now I don't want you to stop here to support the claim period you want to restate the whole claim over again so there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that and then exactly as it's written here would be the easiest thing to do the proportion of people 55 and over oh, let's just write it exactly let's say over 55 
who dream in black and white is greater than the proportion of those under 25, period. Now this is uh, probably the most important statement because this is the conclusion that you're making uh, you, when you're drawing the conclusion about the population, the two populations that we have, and your conclusion needs to be understandable and readable to those who are not doing statistics. And um, this is based on uh, the data, <coughs> and you're making a conclusion. You don't want to say anything about null hypothesis or anything like that in your final conclusion, because the idea of a null hypothesis is the process that we're that we're doing here. Okay. Now, if this seems like it's a lot, it, it's it's because it is. If you want to streamline this in a test or a quiz situation, let me highlight what I would like for you to have for sure, definitely for sure. I would like to see the hypotheses. I would like to see your calculator command that you used and I always will be looking for the test statistic and the p-value. I want your decision and it would be good if you state why you made your decision. So your decision is either to reject an null hypothesis or to fail to reject an null hypothesis. And that is based on a comparison of the p-value with a significance level. And then finally and more most importantly, I would like to see this whole text about your conclusion in non-technical terms. Okay. Now this is important for me because it tells me that you're using the correct uh, calculator command and rejecting or failing to reject is not the end of the hypothesis test process. The end of the hypothesis test process is the wording in non-technical terms. Okay? So I hope that helps out in having you guys work on your quizzes and your homework and especially for the test. Okay, good luck.